Today at Robert's Guitar Dungeon, we're talking about the 12 greatest guitar amps ever. few months back I did a couple of videos one on the greatest on the best sounding clean amps ever and another one on the worst amps ever and both of which got tremendous responses even though some of those responses were from a few irate viewers because their favorite amp was or was not mentioned which I think is hysterical but nonetheless I have received numerous requests to do a video on the greatest amplifiers ever so here is the list that I have put together as a quick disclaimer, please note that the lists on this amplifier are merely my favorites and my opinions only, and there is absolutely no factual way whatsoever to quantify a list of 10 greatest amplifiers ever. So this list really is more my list of favorite amplifiers, and just so that you understand the criteria of which I'd created this list from these are amps that i personally do have experience with in some form of fashion or another uh amps that i personally very much enjoy and amps that i find i i find or found to have been very influential on the music industry as a whole at one point in time or another so with all that in mind let's get to it number 12 vox ac30 this amp has been used as far back as the beatles uh, among uh, many, many, many other well-known artists since then, not the least of which are artists such as The Edge from U2 and, of course, Brian May from Queen. The Vox AC30 is, you know, provides one of the best clean tones on the planet, in my opinion, uh, a clean tone which I described in my Clean Amps video as jangly and uh, a description that I still stick by today. I absolutely love the clean tone of this amp, and the gain that you can get out of these amps when you really crank them up is also very, very unique sounding and just has classic rock written all over it. Unfortunately, nowadays all Vox amps are made overseas in China. However, the older British made versions are really the ones to have and are becoming more and more sought after on the used market today. So if you can get your hands on an AC30 Top Boost model, which is a UK built amp, Whatever it costs, my advice, spend the money. Number 11, Soldano SLO100. This amp has been around since 1987, and last I checked, it's still in production today. Uh, and is also probably one of the most expensive amplifiers on the market, which I believe has to do partially because of its reputation and partially because it is just a fantastically constructed and well-designed, well-thought-out amplifier. None other than Eddie Van Halen was one of the main figures in bringing the SLO 100 out into the mainstream. The amp that he used primarily on Van Halen's For Unlawful Carnal Knowledge album was none other than the Soldano SLO 100. The reason why he was using that amp briefly was because the tone in his old Marshall Super Leads had begun to deteriorate and he was looking for a solution. The SLO, which stands for Super Lead Overdrive, is designed based on the old hot rodded marshals such as the one that eddie van halen had been using for many years so in eddie van halen's transition from his old marshals to what eventually became uh, his his first signature amplifier with with uh, pv uh he was actually using these the, the uh, soldano slo 100s and uh used those for a brief period of just a couple of years and that part of history particularly when it comes to eddie van halen's amplifiers does not get talked about very often but Without Eddie Van Halen, I don't know that that amp would have been around for now 31 years. It should also be noted that the amplifiers on this list are, in fact, in absolutely no particular order. The, I am merely reading them off on the list that I wrote them down. So don't anybody freak out about my number 10 entry, which is the Marshall Super Lead slash JMP series amplifiers. Yes, yes, they are two different models. However, they're both, you know, the JMP is considered part of the Super Lead slash Plexi family. And I grouped them together because, you know, there is a lot of overlap between the history of the two amplifiers. However, the Super Lead, aka the Plexi, 
was Marshall's first 100 watt amplifier, and this was the sound that defined the 70s. Back in the 70s, you know, even touring artists did not necessarily have the luxury of relying on a PA system to magnify the sound of their amp tone. So back then, our touring artists especially were all looking for more, you know, bigger amps with higher wattage so that they could be heard on larger stages uh, all around the world. Which is also another reason why those amps are so insanely loud. This amp, the Super Lead was nicknamed the Plexi because of the plexiglass panel that was on the front on the uh, control panel of the amplifier, and everybody from Eddie Van Halen to George Lynch to Ace Frehley and many 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 others have all been loyal Plexi and JMP users over the years. As I mentioned, if there's an amp tone that defined rock and roll in the 1970s. This is the one. Number nine, the Fender Bassman. The Fender Bassman is known for its legendary clean tone and is one of the earliest amplifiers to ever be produced. Fender continues to make reissues of all different types of the 59 Bassman to this day, and they are all some of their best selling amps. The early Fender Bassmans, particularly the ones from 1959, which is the quintessential year for that amp are all very very valuable and sell for big big money on the vintage market today i've seen them sell many many times for tens of thousands of dollars ironically this amp was designed for bass players but it was guitar players that actually took to the tone of the amplifier again specifically for its very very clean sound and if you want to see its influence throughout the rest of history Marshall's first amplifier in 1962, which was the JTM-45, was based on the Fender Basement circuit. No, it was not a Fender Basement clone, but it was that design that spawned Jim Marshall to create what became the JTM-45. Number 8, Roland JC-120. This amp was listed number one on my best clean sounding amps video, and while it did raise the ire of a, num of a few people, most people seem to agree with me that this is the best sounding clean amp tone ever. This is also the only solid state amplifier that you're going to see on this list, but what's very unique about this particular amplifier is, again, not you know the clean tone, but the thing with it is... With a lot of solid state amps, they tend to get really, really muddy when you turn them up, and the JC120 does not do that. The JC120 is very, very well designed. Uh, it's been around for 40 years now. They've been around since the late 70s, with very, very few changes along the way. If you're looking for a very clean, very flat sounding amp that serves as a magnificent pedal platform, the JC120 is a very, very good place to start. The distortion channel itself is honestly is not not very good at all uh and most people uh most players don't even use it and it very very rarely gets talked about but the clean tone and the onboard chorus and uh vibrato and uh, i believe reverb effects that are on that amplifier all more than make up for it number seven the pv 5150 and 6505 series amps the PV5150 and 6505 essentially are the exact same amplifier. Back in the early 90s, Eddie Van Halen signed his first uh, signature amplifier deal with PV, uh, which became the 5150, a name to which Eddie Van Halen himself does own the rights to. This amp was designed in collaboration with Eddie Van Halen and is what he used for years uh, before his contract ended and he ended up uh, starting his own brand, which is now licensed by Fender. However, when that happened, it was by far PV's best-selling amplifier, and PV did not want to get rid of it, so they simply changed the name to the 6505 and have continued to expand the line ever since. This amp has gone on to become one of the best rock amps ever, and still, to this day, is used on all kinds of rock and hard rock and heavy metal records. Guitar players from all those genres absolutely love this amplifier because of its tone, its durability, uh, and nowadays, especially as longevity, uh, and honestly, because of the price point, it's actually very, very affordable and still, I believe, maybe even the only amp left in PV's lineup that's still made in the USA. This thing does all kinds of, uh, all kinds of rock and high gain tones. It takes pedals very, very well, uh, and sounds fantastic. The clean tone is non-existent on it. So if you're looking for a clean amp, this is not the amp for you, but if you're looking for a rock machine, 
definitely check out the PV6505s. Number six, Fender Supersonic. This one here is one of my favorites, and this is actually my very favorite Fender amp that they have uh, probably ever made. Fender have never really been a company that have ventured much into the high gain amplifier territory because they've always been so much more well known for their clean tones and their uh, uh, lower gain breakup stuff that blues and country players really, really like. And while this amp does do those things very well, it's still a phenomenal sounding rock amplifier. This thing does some really, really cool high gain amp sounds. And the other thing that this amp does that's really cool is you still get the classic Fender clean tone out of it uh, in a couple of different versions. It actually has the clean version of the uh, Vibrolux, I believe, and the other one I think is uh, the Deluxe or uh, um, you know another one of those, uh, uh, one of the more well-known amplifier models. But they both sound fantastic, and uh, it's it's really a you know for just a two-channel amplifier, it's actually a really versatile amp and uh, does quite a bit. I really really like the Supersonic. Number five, Mesa Boogie Mark V. I was real real close to putting the Mesa Dual Rectum Rectifier on this list instead because the Dual Rectifier in particular. If I were going to choose an amplifier that defined the decade of the 2000s, no question the dual rectifier would be it. However, Mesa Mark Series amplifiers have been around since the late 70s, and the Mark V amp encompasses all of the different generations of the Mark Series amplifiers. James Hetfield of Metallica is, has always been a big, big proponent uh, and a very well-known user of the Mark II C+, and that amp appeared on, you know, just about everywhere on the first four Metallica albums. Izzy Stradlin of Guns N' Roses was has been very well known for using a Mark III on the Appetite for Destruction record, and of course John Petrucci has been a huge proponent of the Mark series amps for pretty much his entire career up to the point that now he actually has a signature version of the Mark V. The Mark V is an extremely versatile amplifier and has encompassed all of the tones that were in all of the previous generations into the Mark V itself. There is in fact a Mark II C Plus mode on that amplifier as well as I believe a 3 and a 4 and the actual current Mark V mode actually has a, a really, really high gain setting that is very, very similar to the dual rectifiers. In short, tone-wise, this amp absolutely does it all, and so, it's been so successful to the point that Mesa has out, actually now expanded the line even further to include not only John Petrucci's signature model, but there is also a Mark V 35, which is a, just a lower, watt ver, lower wattage version of the 90 watt, full-size version and there's also a 25 watt version that is uh, even smaller yet to get down into a certain price point that is missing just a few of the bells and whistles so there are now all different kinds of options out there available for the mark V amplifier and like i said if it's an amp that does it all this is might be a good place to start looking number four orange thunderverb 200 Particularly in their current product line, the Orange is probably best well known for the Rocker Verb series amps. And I almost put one on here, but the truth is I've always liked the Thunder Verb so much better, even though I believe now it's even out of production. This was the first amplifier that I at least had ever gotten my hands on that had a built-in attenuator. And at 200 watts, it needed it because that amp was just ungodly loud. However, one thing that it did extremely well that has always stood out in the memory banks is the gain channel. It was one of the heaviest sounding distortions I've ever heard and it stayed, you know, the gain stayed really, really tight even on the bottom end. All, you know, with the volume and everything turned all the way up, you know, this, I, through the right cabinet, this amp just does not get muddy. And it's a absolutely phenomenal sounding rock and metal amp. If I were going to go out and buy an orange amp tomorrow, no question, it would be a Thunderverb. Number three, Fender Twin Reverb. 
This is another entry that I was kind of up in the air about which, which one I should enter between the Twin Reverb and the Deluxe Reverb, and I, just, I settled on the Twin. And the reason being is because when you ask a number of guitar players what they think the best sounding clean amp out there is, you know, the Twin Reverb seems to be one of those answers that comes up more often than not. The clean, it is very, very well regarded for its clean channel. However, it's also, you know, when you really, really crank it up, you know, it's also a pretty good little rock machine. Well, I shouldn't say little because it's 85 watts and it's, you know, a 212 combo and extremely heavy to lug around. This amp became famous in 1965 and is still in production today. It has gone through several different design changes, but the, on the current product line, there is actually two different reissues, one for the 65 Blackface and one for the Silverface 70s version that came later because Honestly, both of those amps are still very, very popular on the used market today. They produce phenomenal clean tones, but one thing that they do that a lot of people forget about, even at 85 watts, and I have actually, I have personally conducted this test, when you crank it all the way up and put it right next to a JCM 800, believe it or not, even though it's 15 watts less, the Twin Reverb is usually louder. The Twin Reverb has been used by many, many players over the years, uh, not the least of which are... You know, Jimmy Page was known for using one in the studio on many, many records. Kenny Wayne Shepard actually uses two of them in his uh, in his rig, and it has been said that Ace Frehley, despite all of his uh, his his stage full of Marshalls, oftentimes had a twin reverb hidden underneath the stage someplace that was the source of his tone for a lot of songs. This is a legendary amp that I think everybody should try at least once in their life. Number two, Diesel Herbert, or Dietzel as Henning Pauly likes to remind us of how that uh, brand is, that brand name is actually pronounced in German, uh, as this is a German company. Uh, however, over here in the, in the States, we most of us pronounce it as diesel because it's spelled the same way as a diesel engine, with the exception of a, of a Z in place of the S. Regardless of how it's pronounced or how it's spelled, the diesel Herbert is on this list because it is the heaviest sounding distortion that I have ever heard in my life. A lot of people I'm sure are going to comment that if I was going to include a diesel amp it should have been the VH4 and they may not be wrong. The VH4 is probably known to be diesel's flagship model however this is the the Herbert is the other $5,000 amplifier that diesel makes and I had an opportunity to, to sit down and spend a fair amount of time playing a diesel herbert full stack no less and like i said the it was the heaviest sounding distortion i have ever heard in my life again kind of similar to the orange thunderbird but in this case even more so that not only was it the heaviest I've ever, I've ever heard but it did not get muddy it you know it's stays tight at any volumes at any gain level and it's just a very very well designed amplifier that could be used for just about anything i love these amps and there is a i can attest to the fact there is a very very good reason why those amplifiers are almost five thousand dollars number one marshall jcm 800 i mentioned earlier that this list is not necessarily in any particular order however this particular entry absolutely needs to be number one and the reason why is because the Marshall JCM 800 not only defined the sound of the of the entire decade of the 80s, but it was that sound that helped to define an entire culture among not just musicians but music fans and you know everything you think of anybody thinks of anything going on in the 80s. You know, there's almost always a soundtrack that goes along with that memory, and in that soundtrack, the chances of there being a JCM 800 on that recording are pretty strong. That amplifier was used on not just rock and metal, you know, not just the rock and the hair metal stuff from the 1980s, but it was all over pop rock and many, many different genres of music. Just about everybody back in the 1980s was playing a JCM 800, and if they weren't, they were playing an amplifier that sounded an awful lot like it. If you were a professional musician in the 1980s and you were shopping for an amplifier, there was very little question over what amp you wanted it was just a matter of which version this is another amplifier that i think every guitar player should have the opportunity to experience at least once in their lives 
They sound absolutely phenomenal. Even still to this day, there are being records put out trying to emulate the sound that that amplifier produces. Yes, the argument could be made that it is a one-trick pony, but that one trick is very, very well polished. And as I mentioned, it's, it has been documented on tons and tons and tons of famous recordings uh, since the 1980s, even all the way up, and up to the current era. Marshall still produces a reissue of this amplifier to this day. Uh, and even though it is just a little bit different, uh, the reissues do sound pretty good, but there's just nothing like an old vintage 19, yeah, 1980s JCM 800 100 watt head at full blast threatening to rip your head off again this is an amp that i think every guitar player should have the opportunity to experience and if your adrenaline doesn't start pumping as soon as you you nail that first chord then there's something wrong with you in my opinion because that's exactly what happens to me every time i get the chance to play through one hopefully i'll have one of my own someday but you know, with the current where my what my music career is currently doing right now, which is 99% in this room recording videos just like this one, there's very little need for an amp with that much volume and that much power. So, for that reason, I can't justify owning one, but that doesn't mean that I won't be able to here at some point down the road. That's all for this list. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had as much fun going through it with me as I did compiling it. A lot of these amps have brought back some very fond memories for me, and hopefully they've done the same for you as well. Uh, if you would like to support this channel, you can go check out my uh, Teespring shop, the link of which should be up here in the card as well as down in the description. And uh, you can uh, buy yourself a t-shirt just like this one that I just added to the shop not too long ago. Uh, also, if you want to to continue to support my channel, you can uh, hit the subscribe button down below as well as the little alert icon right next to it. And uh, you'll receive alerts on when I upload new uh, videos to this channel every Wednesday and Saturday morning. Uh, comments down below are always welcome, of course. Uh, links to anything uh, pertinent to this video will be down in the description. Uh, I apologize for having a microphone in front of my face this whole time because I just recently upgraded my recording equipment and now my cheap little old lab mic will not work with it. So, we're going with the old mic on a stick thing here for the time being. At any rate, check out some of these links and stuff that I just uh, mentioned and pointed out that are all over the place. And uh, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. You know what? There are tons of young people out there that want to get involved in music and do not have the means to do so. If you are watching this video, most likely you're a musician, and many experienced musicians have tons of broken and unwanted gear lying around that they're not doing anything with. Please visit my friends at Share the Music on Facebook at the link below and learn how you and your unwanted gear can help change somebody's life.